Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the Palette Modular Controller. Well, I'm lucky enough to live close to where the pallet guys are, the engineers, the designers, the inventors of this amazing product, and they stopped by, gave me an expert kit, and I tell you, I am blown away. I never will promote any company that I don't believe in 100%. I think this product is an absolute winner. Doesn't matter if you're using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, Character Animator, Spotify, or anything. It's going to integrate with your computer, Mac, and Windows. Let's have a look. So this is the expert kit. And when I open that up, you'll see everything packaged nicely. Get a couple of, of nice little stickers, a little user guide here, and each one of them is a complete aluminum uh, controller with little power connections on the side. So we'll take these out and start putting them together. And you won't believe how easy this is. This is the main brain of the whole thing. It's the core. And with this, you get two high sensitive sliders, three multifunction dials and two arcade style buttons. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the core and it plugs in just straight USB. You can see when I plug in the core, it comes up in the Palette 2 controllers. And as soon as I start to connect things, you'll see them show up. So here's one dial. I'm going to put another dial in here. It shows up, put another dial, and put one of the buttons, another button, and then the sliders, making sure that I have these connectors position correctly. And the last one, boom. there we go. I love the fact that the Pallet app and the Pallet hardware mm, connect. I don't have to refresh anything. I don't have to uh, redo anything. It just knows what it's doing. So let's keep going now. So along the top of the Pallet window, you'll see a number of different configurations here. And these are all saved in profiles. And you get a number of default profiles, and it shows you whether it was created for the expert kit or there's the professional kit down here. And you can add these just by clicking here as I've done, and they show up. And it's not just for Premiere Pro. Like I said, it's for uh, Photoshop, it's for Lightroom, it's for non-Adobe applications. So each one of these has a function, and if you click on this, you'll see different functions. I want to show you that when you select each one, they're going to be different. So when you're selecting a slider, there are fewer controls. When you're clicking on a button, you get more controls. And when you're on a dial, you get even more controls. So if you look inside these controls, you can see here, um, you have controls for things like opacity, and when you twirl down motion, you've got controls for position, scale, rotation, anchor point, all the things that are in that effects control panel, and audio effects, volume level, keyframes, select the next keyframe, move keyframes, change the keyframes value, and a whole bunch of great stuff here for the Lumetri color panel too, so you can use this for grading. Playback. Zooming in, zooming out, jogging, shuttling on the timeline, more on the audio mixer, and just general adjustments. So that's just in that section here. There's also a keyboard mode that will emulate any keyboard controls, a Windows mode, and function switching. So you could actually have the two buttons jumping between these different functions switching. So instead of having to move my mouse over and change it from editing to grading or whatever, I could choose the buttons for that. So I'm just going to leave this one here 
at its default and we'll start to look at these different controls. So with this clip selected, if I start to if I start to change, let me go into my effects controls. And you can see I'm changing the opacity. And by default, Premiere Pro does set keyframes, so we can get rid of that keyframe here if we wanted just a live value. The next one is scale. Zooming in and zooming out. So we're zooming in and zooming out here. Now we're zooming in and zooming out of the timeline. So this is typical um, plus and minus controls on the keyboard. And this is jogging. And when you're jogging, it's going to jog at a certain speed. If you push and hold, then you'll jog much faster. So this dial actually has two different ways to control this. And on this one, this will take you to different edit points. So you could jump to an edit point and then fine tune the position within that edit point. I wanted to show you the difference between jog and shuttle. So let's go back to this control and change this one. And we can search. So there's shuttle. And there's also an advanced setting in here where you can set the overall sensitivity. So now you see this says shuttle. Let's go look at the difference. So with shuttle, you notice that my hand is off the controller and it continues to play. And it plays much faster. I think the sensitivity is too much. So let's go back and change that sensitivity. Advance, we'll take it down to here. Click done. Now let's do it. So you can see I've got smaller movements in here and it's slowing right down and shuttling back and forth. All right, let's go look at the grading setup. So there's exposure, saturation, a bypass for the lumetry and resetting lumetry, vibrance, tint, and temperature. And of course, you can change these to anything you want. So whatever specific grading you want, or you can just add more controls. If this isn't enough, you can get an expert kit and you can add more sliders, more dials, more buttons. All right, let's go to this one. We'll go to color. And I'm just going to reset All right, so in the basic setting, you can see we're changing the overall exposure. Changing the overall saturation value. Look at that. Notice that it jumped to the creative side because this is a vibrance control. And if I push down, I can reset that. Okay, that's brilliant engineering. The palette is actually controlling the Lumetri color panel. It's bringing the, the uh, part of the interface that I need in the front. I don't even have to worry about that. I'm just moving my sliders, baby, or my dials. So this is back over to the basic correction because this is the temperature. So if I'm taking this cooler or taking this warmer, and this one is the tint, so this is a good, a default to have these two together like that. Now let's go and look at some audio settings. And I've got one here. Now the default one is for volume, clip volume, soloing, muting, cycle, pan, and jog. I've got one here where I've got volume level, the track volume level, previous and next track, pan, um, and this is the mode for setting keyframes, and this is where the playhead is. So, let me call up my audio track mixer. Right now when I change the
right now when I change the track volume, you see it's on the first track. That's the default. I've got these two set up for previous and next track. So when I push this, it's going to jump to, oh, I pushed it too much. It's jumping to the next track. Next track, next track, next previous track. This is great. I have one slider for my track volume and it can jump between these. Now, hey, if you really wanted to go crazy, you could have eight sliders and eight tracks and be controlling that any way you want. But this is one slider for the track volume. And then there's the clip volume. So when I move over top of this clip, if we go to the audio clip mixer, you can see that's moving the clip mixer. The only thing that is, now right now the pan isn't working and that's a little bug that Adobe's got to fix. So this cycles automation modes. So I've got a tutorial about automation modes, but you can see it's going between touch, latch, and read. So with two buttons, one dial, and one slider, I could be setting the automation and recording different kinds of automation all within uh, one piece of hardware, but for multiple tracks. There's also motion settings in here for, and we can set opacity, X position, shuttle, Y position, and look at this one. I added this one in here. You won't believe it. Remove transitions. Say what? So watch this. I'm going to select all of these, hit Command-D, Control-D. I've added a whole bunch of transitions in here. What if I wanted to remove those transitions? <laughs> don't go looking in Premiere Pro for a command that says, gee, I don't know, remove transitions, because there isn't one. You can only get it from the palette. Now, just to explain how that happens, when Adobe creates an application like Premiere Pro, they create what's known as a software development kit, an SDK, that has a bunch of these controls. And then they make that available to developers like Palette. And Palette goes through and finds all of the things they want to control. And they realize, boy, I bet you people would love one button to get rid of all of the uh, uh, transitions. Yeah. And there's also one for getting rid of uh, all the keyframes, too. Oh, yeah. The other thing that... that... So... Over here, you can upload and share your profiles that you create. You can download them. Uh, you can save those and you can rotate your setup. So if we click in here, like I showed you, if we go down to the bottom, this is giving me a link to download additional ones. And you can see there's a bunch here that we can download for After Effects, Premiere Pro, lots of Lightroom some Photoshop, even non-Adobe applications can be controlled from this. Even things like Spotify or having a, a, a volume button. Sometimes it's it's hard to find the volume button on you. If lots of laptops, you have to hold a function uh, key and you have to hit another button. You can have the volume set to one of these. So when you're sitting leisurely listening to computer, you just reach over and turn the volume up and down. You can change the colors uh, on these. You can uh, change a lot of things. I really think this is an amazing tool. I think the guys at Palette are brilliant. I'm so happy they stopped over here and, uh, and gave me a tour of this amazing expert kit. Like I said, you can start with the expert kit. You can build your own. So if you go to the Palette site and build a kit, you can see here, you can create with a starter kit, professional kit, and you can even add on each one of these. So hopefully you found that informative and hopefully if you're a person who likes to control things with hardware that this made sense for you. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more, you can join us through PayPal. We make it very easy. There's a link in the description and on the front of the um, uh, channel where you can donate monthly. You can use your credit card, debit card, whatever you want. We love our supporters over there on PayPal. By the way, 
all of the videos in this tutorial were provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock images, video, motion graphics, templates, templates, illustrations, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I hope I can get you connected with your hardware to your computer.